Shout out to tell them everyone. Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother Zachwa. And with me is Brother Kasafo. Peace be with y'all. We have a great, exciting lesson for everyone today. Catching the lie. Um, if you've been following with us, you've been noticing the series that we've been on from the spirit of anger to the spirit of pride to the spirit of a narcissist. And now we're going into catching a lie, the spirit of lying. So we hope that this is edifying for you as well. Um, please hit the subscribe button. Please like and share our videos. And also please visit our website at www.hebrewreaders.com. Um, without further ado, this lesson that we're going into is going to cover all the aspects of lying. The meaning, the law pertaining to lying, the spirit and the remedy, and what we need to stay focused on to overcome it and be mindful of it for our own salvation. Uh, can we get the definition, Brother Katafo? I'm going to start with the definition for a lie, which is H3584. I'm going to stop you in in a lot of the words. All right. It's a primitive root to be untrue. Right. So on the first and foremost, a lie is untrue. Okay. So we have to remember that. <laughs> it sounds facetious, but things get a little complex. So let's let's dig into it. To be untrue in word. All right. So it can be untrue in word. So that's words that come forth out of our mouths. Right. Go ahead, Casa. To lie. Right. To lie in itself. Feign. Feign. Okay. So feign means to pretend to be affected either by a feeling state or injury. Right. So if you're feigning something, so in word, you can actually lie by pretending to be affected. Um, let's look at Luke 20 and 19 and 20 so we can get an example of that. Luke chapter 20, verse 19. And the chief priests and the scribes, the same hour sought to lay hands on him. And they feared the people, for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men. So you see the chief priests, how they operated. They actually sent forth men that feigned themselves to be just men. So they were pretending to be affected by righteousness. So you can see how it plays in many different aspects, but you can actually understand how a person could feign themselves in words to do something which is a lie, right? So pretending is a lie or to put on is a lie, okay? Um, what's the next one, Brother Kazafo? Um Disown. Right. So we have an example of disowning in word, right? As Peter disowned Christ three times in word, right? So we have that example to understand disowning. Um, the definition of disowning means to refuse to acknowledge or maintain any connection with. So you can see he disowned the connection with Christ. And that's how he actually lied three times. All right. Now, what's next, Brother Kostafo? To be untrue indeed. Right. So just as you can lie in word, you can also lie in your actions, in your deeds, right? So how can we do that, Brother Kasafo? What's the first one? To disappoint. Right. So to disappoint means to prevent hopes or expectations from being realized. So what that means is that say you're going to do something and you don't actually fulfill it. You don't actually do it. So that's actually one of the definitions of disappoint, 
So to say you're going to do something and not do it is a lie. All right. Let's continue. Fail. Right. Now, fail, we all think about failing is when you don't achieve something, but there's more definitions to the word fail as well. The word fail means neglect to do something. So if I neglect to do something that I said I was going to do, I'm failing, right? So that's actually considered a lie according to the scriptures. Let's continue, Brother Casa. Cringe. Cringe. Now, the definition of cringe is to bend one's head and body in fear or in a servile manner, right? So being in fear to speak the truth in a situation, as Peter would be an example of cringing as a result of fear, which actually caused the lie, right? So he was actually, when he went into that fear and not to speak up, he actually lied right at that point. Then he actually lied in word. So he lied in deed and word so that we can actually understand the fullness of lying. Um, let's continue, Brother Casa. What's the next one? Deceive. Right. So we know what deceiving is. Continue. Deny. Deny. Dissemble. Dissemble. Now, this is the one I want to touch on. Uh, dissemble means to disguise or conceal a feeling or intention. So when you see in the scripture, when it talks about those that dissemble or anything of that nature, you can actually understand what it's talking about. It's that they're actually disguising or concealing their true feelings about how they feel about something or their true intentions of what they're doing or why they're doing what they're doing. And that's actually how we actually can lie indeed. And it also causes us to lie in word, right? So we don't want to be the symbolers, okay? And we want to understand that spirit and all the aspects of the spirit of lying so that we can actually stand aloof from it or stand away from it. Um, continue, Brother Castle. We'll go ahead and finish it out. Fail, deal falsely, be found liars, belie, lie, lying, Submit selves. Right. And you see why the end of the definition is submitting selves, because you're actually submitting yourself to the spirit of lion when you operate in any of those fashions. So we want to stand away from that in truth and cleave on to our Elohim, because our Elohim doesn't operate in that spirit because it's not of him. Right. And we're going to get into that. And we're going to understand the fullness of these things and what I'm saying. All right, so now since we understand the fullness of the definition, let's now look into the law to gain the understanding of it, All right? Can we jump over to Leviticus chapter 6, verse 2, and we're going to read up to verse 5, please. Sure. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 2. If a soul sin and commit a trespass against Ahaya and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered to him to keep, or in fellowship, or in a thing taken away by violence, or had deceived his neighbor. All right. So we have to understand that the law says if we partake in the spirit of lion, we are trespassing against Ahia himself. So we have to be mindful of that, and that's going to come back up later in the lesson. Go ahead, Brother Casa. Or have found that which was lost, and lieth concerning it, and sweareth falsely. In any of all these that a man doeth, sinning therein, then it shall be, because he hath sinned and is guilty, that he shall restore that which he took violently away, or the thing which he hath deceitfully gotten, or that which was delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which he found, or all that about which he hath sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle and shall add the fifth part more thereto and give it unto him to whom it appertaineth in the day of his trespass offering. All right. So we can see in the times of old, whatever you took, you have to give more back in abundance, which was actually trying to teach you a lesson that when you take something, 
that Alahim didn't give you, you end up losing more than what you gained. So we see the lesson in it. But as we know, it couldn't change the heart, right? Because the sacrifices, the trespass offerings, any of those things, they couldn't purge the heart, right? So we have Alahim for that. And that's going to come up later in this lesson as well. So let's let's continue going. But what what actually does Alahim require of us? All right? Can we jump into Leviticus nineteen and eleven and twelve, please? Yes, sir. Leviticus nineteen, verse eleven: You shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. Right. So we see that Alahim requires us not to steal. Alahim requires us not to deal falsely, right? So that's to dissemble, right? We don't want to dissemble. We don't want to conceal our true intentions or our true feelings, right? So we don't want to lie in word. We don't want to lie in deed, right? Continue, Brother Casa. Leviticus 19 and 12. And you shall not swear by my name falsely, Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy Alahayim. I am Ahaya. Amen. All right. So we're not supposed to swear upon Alahayim falsely either to say that one, and this actually goes more to a false prophet that would actually do something like this to actually swear upon the name of Alahayim falsely to justify or to validify what they're actually saying. Um, but we all fall into it where we may actually say, um, Allah I am be my witness or, you know, Lord knoweth or whatever the case is. And we may not actually be speaking something that may be actually true or something that actually we know for certain, you know, so we have to be very mindful of those things as well. All right. We have to abide in the love and obedience of Allah I am's voice which is his commandments, that we don't profane his name, as Paul spoke about in Romans chapter 3. Can we read uh, Romans 3 and 5, please, Brother Cossifo? Sure. Romans 3 and 5. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of Allah Hayam, what shall we say? Is Allah Hayam unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. Right. So if we're doing wrong and think it brings glory to Allah Hayam, we are mistaken. What does Paul say? Let's continue in Romans 3 and 6, please. Allah, I am forbid. For then, how shall Allah, I am judge the world? All right. So we can't be deceived to think that if we do wrong or we speak a lie or we go according to a lie, that is actually bringing glory to Allah, I am. All right. Allah is going to judge the world based on the commandments and his righteousness. Not our own, though we may be deceived by the spirit of lying. So we have to be very mindful of our actions, our words, our deeds, that we may not be speaking things of our own or walking in our own law or our own, or our own righteousness that may not commend the righteousness of Allah Hayyam. So we have to be very mindful and circumspect of ourselves not to fall into this. Um, can we continue in Romans chapter 3, verse 7, Brother Casa, please? Sure. Verse 7. But if the truth of Allah Hayyam has more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? Right. So now we can understand what Paul was actually referring to. He said, we can't lie, nor be walking in deceit to others or to ourselves and glorify Allah Hayyam. And we'll be judged as sinners if we do so. We have to abide in the truth always because that means we're abiding in Christ. Not to be deceived by fear, by our own lust, by anger, or envy, or jealousy, nor fornication, or any other spirit that may join with the spirit of lying. To cause us the error. All right. Can we jump over to John 4 and 16 so that we can actually touch on that Yache is the truth? And by us walking in that truth, we actually abide with him. Um, please, Brother Casa. Thank you. 
All right. John chapter 14, verse 6. Yahche saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right. So we have to walk in his way. We have to walk in his truth. And we have to walk in his life, being an example of our life reflecting his. Right. And we're going to get into this. this gonna, we're, gonna, we're building up so that we can get to the fullness of it, so that we can actually understand. All right. So we can't be deceived by the spirit of lying from our own lust or one that speaks lies according to the evil desires and lust of those listening to justify their deeds. But us that desire to abide in Yahweh Christ are encouraged to be faithful witnesses. Let's see what a faithful witness would do. Can we read Proverbs chapter 14, verse 5, please? Sure. Proverbs 14 and 5. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. Right. So us, we desire to be faithful witnesses. So a faithful witness would not lie. A faithful witness would abide in the truth of Allah Hayyam and Yache. So we have to be very mindful of that. Even when we fall into a situation where fear or or pride may enter into us, we have to be very mindful that of what we're speaking, what we're doing. We have to be aware so that the spirit of lying may not enter into our hearts. And Allah Hayyam forbid if the spirit of pride or anger or, or fear enters into us, then of course we know we have other lessons for that for you to build yourself up in those areas but for lying right now we have to be very circumspect and on guard least another spirit attaches to cause us to error in the spirit of lying right but we know a false witness will utter lies right and we're going to go into why a false witness will utter lies in the mindset and the belief and the spirit behind it that actually allows them to feel as if they can do it and not be harmed, right? So let's learn about false witnesses and see how they operate to devise against our lust and evil desires to get us to be prone to their lying and lead us astray from Elohim. Can we read the Shepherd of Hermes, Mandate 11, chapter 1, verse 1, please? Sure. Mandate 11, chapter 1, verse 1. He showed me men seated on a couch and another man seated on a chair. And he said to me, Seest thou those that are seated on the couch? I see them, sir, say I. These, saith he, are faithful, but he that sitteth on the chair is a false prophet who destroyeth the mind of the servants of Allah Hayyam. I mean of the doubtful minded, not of the faithful. So why are the doubtful minded? Why is he only able to destroy the minds of the doubtful minded? And that's very, very important for us to understand. Because to be faithful, you have to hold on to the truth. That's what faith is. You're holding on to the truth and you're not wavering to any lie or any other notion to be able to veer off from the left hand nor to the right. That's faith. But a doubtful minded person, you're contending between truth and lies and you become doubtful. So when a lie has place in you or a lie, a lie has place to enter in, into you through your hearing or whatever the case is, then you start to you start to battle between what is truth and what is a lie. And that makes you doubtful minded where someone can come in and play it on that insecurity. They can come in and say the right words to play on whatever lust it is or whatever desire you have that's against the commandments. Now you're conflicted. Because you're conflicted between what's right and also your own desire and what you want. So it makes you doubtful-minded. 
instead of faithful. And that's very important for us to understand, especially when it comes to the spirit of lying. And of course, the spirit of lying itself, the false prophet and the angel of wickedness. Because all those are idols, right? And they all work together because they're all on the same team. So it's going to start coming peace and all together for us to truly understand the severity or the, the grand scheme of it all to get us to fall. All right. Can we continue? Um, Brother Casa, please. Yes, sir. Uh, verse two. These doubtful minded ones then come to him as to a soothsayer and inquire of him what shall befall them. Right. So instead of being faithful, knowing all things coming from Allah for our good, and being content with the will of Allah on our lives, they end up seeking control to know for themselves. Right? It's not enough for them to know that Allah is in control and Allah is guiding and leading them, though they may not understand what he's doing or how he's doing it. It's the control that's being seeked. And by seeking that control, it creates one to be doubtful minded. Then what would one do? They would go to a soothsayer to inquire what shall befall them, to know the future, to know what's going to happen in their life so that they can feel like they're in control, knowing what's going to come. So we can understand why one would go to a soothsayer and what spirit is actually leading them to go to a soothsayer because they're not content and they're not faithful. It's the lack of faith that actually causes them to go in that direction. All right, let's continue, Brother Casa, please. And he, the false prophet, having no power of a divine spirit in himself, speaketh with them according to their inquiries and according to the lust of their wickedness, and filleth their souls as they themselves wish. Right. So many of us struggle with the spirit of lying or give place to a false prophet for the mere fact that it's what we want to hear according to our own desires, not being content with our reality of what we have been given from Allah. Right. So just like we have spoke of in the contentment lesson, now things are actually starting to come together so that we can actually understand what leads a man in different directions so that we can know not to be led in those different directions. Okay. Right, let's, let's continue, Brother Cosmo, please. Verse 3. For being empty himself, he giveth empty answers to empty inquirers. For whatever inquiry may be made of him, he answereth according to the emptiness of the man. Right, because the man or the woman is not full of faith. So now he's playing, he's playing on that lack of contentment, that desire that that man or woman has. He's actually playing on it, or she is playing on it, because false witnesses can be men or women, right? Just as there are men and women prophets, there's men and women false prophets, okay? So we have to be very, very mindful, because they're looking for what you have need of or what you desire. And a lot of times, they're operating in the same spirit or giving over to the same spirit that may be in you. So that spirit recognizes one another because it's the same spirit. Though you may not know one another in the physical, the spirit is familiar with itself. So it can quickly realize, okay, that person is dealing with this spirit. That person is dealing with the spirit of lying. That person is dealing with the spirit of fornication because that spirit is operating in that person as well, that false prophet. So it's easy for them to say, oh, you're going to get married. Your husband awaits you. Da, 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 da. It's easy for them to do that because they already know what spirit is dwelling in you. And this is why we have to come out of those spirits 
so that no man can deceive us by evil means to cause us to go astray from Elohim, because we'll be walking in the fruits of the Spirit. We'll be walking in Yahweh's Spirit. We'll be full of the Spirit, and that no evil spirit would dwell in us to cause us to go astray, nor to be deceived. Right? Let's continue, Brother Casa, please. But he speaketh also some true words, for the devil filleth him with his own spirit. If so be, he shall be able to break down some of the righteous. Right. So we know, even in our lives, in the life that we were walking in before, and the life that we may be walking in today, we know that good lies are always mingled with the truth. And that's the way the devil operates, to make it hard to pinpoint the lies and differentiate the truth from the lies. So we must not allow such spirits to operate in us, nor deceive us to believe them. We have to be walking in the truth, and the spirit of the truth has to dwell in us so that we can actually differentiate what is the truth. I hope that makes sense to everyone. The spirit of truth has to dwell in us for us to be able to discern and understand what is actual truth and what is a lie. If the spirit of lying has place in us, then we're not going to be able to discern what is truth and what is a lie when they're mingled together. So now we're getting a little bit more into this to actually understand how important it is for the spirit of truth and for us to speak the truth in our own hearts and to hold fast to the truth so that we can actually discern good from evil. All right, we're getting somewhere. Let's continue, Brother Casa, please. Verse 4. So many, therefore, as are strong in the faith of the Lord, clothed with the truth. Clothed with the truth. Look at that. So as many, therefore, are strong in the faith of the Lord, clothed with the truth. Right? We actually have to be clothed with it. That means that we have to be fully garnished and walking completely in the truth, walking completely in in truth. Now, we often say we're walking in the truth or we're in the truth. But what does that actually mean? That means that we're not partaking in any lies. That everything that we're walking in and that we believe is from Allah. And not of man, not of a woman, not of the spirit of the angel of wickedness. We're not cleaving unto the spirit of lying, but we're cleaving unto all the truth of Allah. That's that makes the difference. Continue, Brother Kass. I'm sorry. No, don't apologize. It's good edification. <laughs> Clothed with the truth, cleave not to such spirits, but hold aloof from them. So we have to abide in the truth, not to give place to any falsehoods. There can't be any falsehoods in our habitation, in our temple. We have to be completely clothed with the truth, right? And that's the goal, right? Even if you're not there today, that's the goal. That's what we're seeking to go, what we're seeking to become. So we all know what we're seeking to achieve. We have, we have a vision. We're like, okay, that's where I need to be, right? Let's continue, Brother Casa, please. But as many as are doubters and frequently change their minds, practice soothsaying saying like the Gentiles. Now to and, catch that. Now as many as are doubters and frequently change their minds. That's very key. Because what we said about faith, you're holding fast to it. You're not budging. You're not going from the left hand nor to the right. You're not wavering. You're holding on to what you know is true of Allah according to Allah law and his commandments and the wisdom of Allah You're holding on to that in the spirits of Allah and you're not changing your mind. You're not frequently changing your mind. All right. You're not going back and forth between a lie and the truth. You're not going back and forth between your own desires and the commandments. 
now it's starting to get a little more black and white so we can actually understand what we're actually dealing with and we can actually stand away from it. We can actually grow in faith. All right, let's continue, Brother Casa, please. Practice sues saying like the Gentiles and bring upon themselves greater sin by their idolatries. For he that consulteth a false prophet on any matter is an idolater and emptied of the truth and senseless. All right. So if we consult a false prophet on any matter, we are partaking in idolatry. All right. And that actually gives us understanding of what spirit is operating in us. And this is very important because this is why when we speak about who you're following or who you're getting counsel from or what church or what um, preacher or teacher are you following, it makes a great difference. Because if that person is operating in the spirit of lying or falsehood, and you're actually consulting that person. You're actually partaking in their idolatry. If they're teaching you not to keep the commandments, if they're teaching you that women don't have to cover their hair because their hair is their covering, if they're teaching you that the law is done away with, if they're teaching you that through Yache, the commandments were nailed to the cross and you don't have to keep them anymore because he did it. You're partaking in their idolatry if you believe their lie. Now it's getting a little deeper. So now we, we truly have to understand what is working against us to cause us to, to error and to cause us to go astray from that glory that Allah has promised us. Okay. So let's understand the true spirit, right? Because we're, we're, we're getting into the spirit of false witnesses, of false prophets. Now we have to be able to have both sides so that we can decipher which one is actually the one that we should be following. Can we start in chapter 1, verse 5 of the Shepherd of Hermit, Mandate 11, please? Sure. Verse 5, for no spirit given of Allah needed to be consulted, but having the power of deity speaketh all things of itself, because it is from above, even from the power of the divine spirit. But the spirit which is consulted and speaketh according to the desires of men is earthly and fickle, having no power. And it speaketh not at all, unless it be consulted. How then, sir, say I, shall a man know who of them is a prophet and who a false prophet? Here, saith he, concerning both the prophets. And as I shall tell thee, so shalt thou test the prophet and the false prophet. This is how we test them. This is how we know the difference. Right. We have to hold on to this truth and not be blinded by our own desires to then bypass any of these things that the angel Fenuel is actually given unto Hermes. We have to hold fast to them and we can't blind ourselves so that we can follow after our own lust, our own desire. All right. Go ahead, Brother Katsu, please. By his life test the man that hath the divine spirit. In the first place, he that hath the divine spirit, which is from above, is gentle and tranquil and humble-minded, and abstaineth from all wickedness and vain desire of this present world, and holdeth himself inferior to all men, and giveth no answer to any man when inquired of, nor speaketh in solitude, for neither doth the Holy Spirit speak when a man wisheth her to speak. But the man speaketh then when Allah wisheth him to speak. When then the man who hath a divine spirit cometh into an assembly of righteous men, who have faith in a divine spirit, 
and intercession is made to Allah Hayyam by the gathering of those men, then the angel of the prophetic spirit, who is attached to him, filleth the man, and the man, being filled with the Holy Spirit, speaketh to the multitude according as the Lord willeth. In this way, then, the spirit of the deity shall be manifest. This, then, is the greatness of the power as touching the spirit of the deity of the Lord. Here now saith he concerning the earthly and vain spirit, which hath no power but is foolish. In the first place, the man who seemeth to have a spirit exalted himself. All right. So we got to see the divine spirit. Right, And those are the things we need to hold fast to. If we see those things, then that's a clear indication. And that's how we test the spirit to see if it's of Elohim or not. Right, But now, going into the earthly and vain spirit or the spirit of a false prophet right, or a false witness, that man seems to have the spirit exalted himself. So first off, we see pride. There might be sayings like, the power of the divine spirit is over me, or the power of Allah is over me, or that's my anointing. Uh, you, you, you're going to hear a lot of different things. You have to be on guard to actually be listening and not be blinded by the spirit of lying to blind you according to what they're saying, according to your own lust or your own desires by actually seeing what's actually going on with that person. Because we can't omit the things that we see that they're doing that's against the commandments or against the wisdom of Allah Hayyam. If we do that, then where are the problem? There's sin that lieth in us. And we have to examine ourselves. So there's going to be a sense of boastfulness in that man or that woman. Okay. Let's continue, Brother Casa, please. Sure. And he desired to have a chief place. And straightway he is impudent and shameless and talkative and conversant in many luxuries and in many other deceits and receiveth money for his prophesying. And if he receiveth not, he prophesieth not. Now, can a divine spirit receive money and prophesy? It is not possible for a prophet of Allah to do this, but the spirit of such prophets is earthly. Right. So they're seeking money or they're asking for money or they're desiring that wealth or that substance to then go forth to actually do the work you see what's leading them to actually do the work and you see the work of who they're doing it for because it's not about Ahayim. they're not operating in his spirit to serve him they're operating in another spirit serving another one so we have to be very mindful and this is for anyone anyone of the christian church anyone of the hebrew faith anyone of of any faith we have to be mindful of this because the true spirit of Allah Hayyam, no matter what faith you're in, you're going to leave it to come to the true spirit. If that's what you're actually seeking, you're going to come to the true religion regardless because you're going to see the hypocrisy in the other facets of the other religions. So if that spirit actually starts operating and starts drawing you, you're going to draw closer to Allah Hayyam. And you're going to come with others of the same spirit. It's just how it works, right? So Allah is going to gather his people. And his spirit is going to gather his people because once you start operating in the spirit of Allah you're going to draw closer to those of that same spirit. And Allah is going to lead you. So we don't have to worry about that. We just have to focus on doing what we're supposed to do and walking in truth and walking in the right spirit that we can actually decipher those that are operating in the same spirit. 
right? But first, we have to be operating in that spirit to decipher others that are operating in that right spirit and that truth of Allah I am. Let's continue, Brother Casa, please. Verse 13. In the next place, it never approacheth an assembly of righteous men, but avoideth them and cleaveth to the doubtful minded and empty. Right. So we see that spirit is looking for other like minded ones like itself. It's not really looking for the righteous. It's not looking for those that are abiding in truth, though the false prophet, that spirit will take one. If sin enters into you, it will take the faithful. But it's not looking for the faithful. It's looking for the doubtful minded. It cleaveth to the doubtful minded and empty. So if a false prophet is leading someone or you're finding yourself cleaving onto one that's operating in such a spirit as we're talking about right now, you should be examining yourself to see what spirit you're actually operating in and what is driving you or what, what you're seeing or looking for. Because it pretty much shows us ourselves. And if we don't want to see ourselves, it just makes us the more empty. Because you can't fill up something that you don't feel need to be filled. If I feel like my cup is full, though it may not be full, I'm never going to seek water. So we have to be mindful to speak truth and to speak truth within our own heart as Psalms 15 states that we can actually truly see ourselves and see what we have need of that we can actually grow. Okay. It's very important. Okay. Continue by the Casa, please. And prophesy to them in corners and deceive at them, speaking all things in emptiness to gratify their desires. Right. So you see the false prophet or false witness speaks to gratify your desires. So anything that you have need of, anything you, you lust after, they're going to gratify it. Like, yeah, you should get that. That's going to come from the Lord. He's going to give it to you. Like that spirit justifies the things that you want that's not of Allah Hayim, because it wants to make you go astray from Allah Hayim. That's the whole purpose of that spirit. So we can't look at the man or the woman. We have to look at the spirit that's driving them. And also we have to look at the spirit that's driving us. So when we start looking at things in that perspective, then we can actually get to the truth of ourselves and others. Right? We can't be a respecter of persons looking at the carnal, looking at the flesh, but we have to look at the spirit. Continue, Brother Casa, please. For they too are empty whom it answereth. All right. Continue. For the empty vessel placed together with the empty is not broken, but they agree one with the other. Right. So we see that the spirit that is operating in one and the other are the same. So the empty vessel placed with the empty, they don't break when they come together. They operate together. They agree with one another. Now, as we're going to see with the false prophet, when it comes into the assembly of the righteous, it breaks. So we get to actually see the difference how when it comes with others that operate in the same spirit, they don't break, but they agree. But when it comes into the assembly of the righteous, it breaks. So that actually shows, hey, that's a clear distinction for us to say, hey, I know what spirit I'm operating in. I know what has place in me. Okay, let me work on that. If we find ourselves cleaving to, to others that may be walking in such spirits as we're reading, 
Right? We have to understand when the spirit of lion dwells in a man, that spirit then can sort out others with its spirit and those being alike cleave to one another, though being different statuses of life. So one may be a, consider themselves a prophet. One may consider themselves a teacher or apostle or whatever the case is. One may be a man of great wealth or a businessman. One may be poor. One may be a man that works an average job, though they have different statuses in life, right? That's why many could not comprehend Christ when he came to this world because of the spirits that had place in them. So it doesn't matter what status of life you are in or where you are according to the social structure of this world. The spirit that operates is the spirit that operates. It's the same spirit. So we see why many couldn't comprehend Christ because they weren't of the same spirit as him. So they couldn't see him. And we're going to get into this. Uh, continue, Brother Casa, please. Verse 14. But when he comes into an assembly full of righteous men who have a spirit of deity, and intercession is made from them, the man is emptied, and the earthly spirit fleeth from him in fear, and that man is struck dumb, and is altogether broken in pieces, being unable to utter a word. Right. So we see when they come across the true spirit, it breaks them. So we can actually understand what spirit we're in. It's not that 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 righteous man is combating with them. Right. Because then we know, hey, if we're combating with them, we need to examine ourselves. But it's the spirit itself, the essence of the spirit that actually breaks them because they feel that spirit in you. And that spirit, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. The spirit that's operating in you is greater if you're of the righteous. The spirit that's operating in the righteous is greater than the spirit that operates in the false prophets. So that spirit then fleeth from the greater spirit and that man is left to fend for themselves without that false spirit or the spirit of lying that's actually operating in them it fleeth away and they have nothing to say so we can actually understand the spiritual of what's actually happening continue brother casa please or if you pack wine or oil into a closet and place an empty vessel among them and again desire to unpack the closet, the vessel which you place there empty, empty in like manner you will find it. Thus also the empty prophets, whenever they come unto the spirits of righteous men, are found just as they came. Right. Now, they're not growing. Because the spirit of lying is operating in them, they can't see themselves. And just as it was said earlier, that you have to be able to speak truth in your heart to be able to see yourself and to know what you have need of to grow. If the spirit of lying is operating in you, then you can't grow because you can't see yourself to know what you have need of. So you're not humbling yourself to learn. The spirit of lying stunts our growth in righteousness because we're deceived not to turn from our own unrighteousness. You see how important it is to get away from the spirit of lying because it truly hinders us from serving Allah And we're going to understand exactly why coming up. Okay, let's continue, Brother Casa. I won't, I won't get too far into it. Verse 16. I have given thee the life of both kinds of prophets. Therefore, test by his life and his works 
the man who says that he is moved by the Spirit. But do thou trust the Spirit that cometh from Elohim, and hath power? But in the earthly and empty spirit put no trust at all, for in it there is no power, for it cometh from the devil. Now, now we're getting somewhere. Now we can understand why Yahweh said what he said unto the Pharisees in John chapter 8. It says, For there is no power, for it cometh from the devil. The spirit of lying cometh from the devil. And we're going to understand what exactly this means. Let's go into John 8 and 44 through 47, please. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So the spirit of lying is the devil's son. Hence, we have the false prophet to come and the many others that take after his son's spirit. So it's actually the spirit of lying that is actually his son. And those that partake in that spirit actually become his children. And the one that truly is going to take on that spirit is the false prophet. So we see why the false prophet is called the devil's child because of the spirit that he's operating in. Right? That's why in Matthew it said there are many false prophets because when you partake in the spirit of lying, it drives you, it leads you to then serve the devil. All right, let's continue. Verse 45, And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of Allah I am heareth. Allahim's words, ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of Allahim. Now, Yahche is saying some very, very important things. He said, which of you convinces me of sin? Yahche was telling them to keep the commandments, to abide in the faith, to keep the word of Allahim. And they're trying to tell him to do contrary to what he's telling them. They're trying to convince him to sin. He said, and if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? And he's about to tell us why they can't believe or hear the truth. He says, he that is of Elohim, hear of Elohim's words. When you're operating in the truth or the, or the spirit of truth, you can hear Elohim's words. But when you're operating in the spirit of lying, you're not able to hear Elohim's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you're not of Elohim. He was speaking spiritually, that you're walking in the spirit of lying so that you cannot understand the spirit of truth. You're blinded. And this is where we don't want to be. We don't want to be blinded by the spirit of lying where we can't hear the truth of Allah and we're not cleaving or clothing ourselves in the truth of Allah If we're of Allah we're going to hear his commandments and adhere to them in truth. But if we find ourselves justifying our sins or continuing in them, not truly repenting, then we know what spirit has place in us. So we get to dive into the spirits Yahweh was seeing when he was dealing with the Pharisees, seeing the idols that were working in them, which were not allowing them to hear the words of truth, being blinded by their own lusts. Can we jump into Zechariah chapter 10, verse 2, please? Sure. Zechariah 10 and 2. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie. 
and have told false dreams. So the spirit that has dominion over them guides them and gives them their own peculiar visions, right? The idols, the idols that are operating in men and women, they speak vanity. The diviners have seen a lie. So they're given their own peculiar vision from the spirits that have place in them and that are operating in them and that are leading them, right? And have told false dreams. Go ahead, Brother Casa. They comfort in vain. Right. And the word comfort means repent. So they they repent, but they don't change. And we have to be very mindful of that, that we're not comforting in vain. That we're not repenting and then continuing in what we're repenting for. Because then we will be lying. It's the same spirit. It's the same spirit. And now it's starting to touch home a little bit more. Right? We can't repent in vain. Because then we're operating in the spirit of lying. Continue, Casa, please. Therefore, they went their way as a flock. They were troubled. Because there was no shepherd. Now, we see that the idols walk in their own way, not conforming to the ways of Elohim. And because of this, they're troubled, not being able to conform to a shepherd. We have to be circumspect not to allow such spirits to lead us away from Elohim. Now, since we have the understanding of a false prophet, let us now then apply that same understanding to the angel of wickedness that speaks to our minds to enter into our hearts for the spirit of lying to enter in and operate. Can we read um, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 8? And we're going to go down to 11, please. Sure. Jeremiah 7 and 8. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Now the angel of wickedness is the one that preps us for the spirit of lying to enter in without a man or woman physically talking to us to persuade us as a false prophet does. So we can trust in lying words that cannot profit us without a man or woman actually coming and speaking to us in that spirit because the angel of wickedness is with us. The angel of wickedness and the angel of righteousness is with us. And the angel of wickedness will speak lies, but the angel of wickedness isn't the spirit of lying. Right, So the angel of wickedness will bait us or get us to agree. Then the spirit of lying will come to then take us further or to guide us. So what will we do if the angel of wickedness speaks to us, gets us to conform, and then the spirit of lying enters into us? Continue, Casa, please. Will you steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other Elohims whom ye know not? So we don't have to be told by a false prophet to do these things. But yet, we could listen to the angel of wickedness and give ourselves over to the spirit of lying and idols. So we definitely have to be on guard for our souls from all aspects. Let's continue, Brother Costa, in Jeremiah 7 and 10, please. Verse 10. And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. So we can't justify our sins to allow these idols to continue to dwell with us and operate. Allah is speaking against us in these instances where we're justifying the sin or justifying the idol that's operating in us to be able to stay. Go ahead, Casa. Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith Ahaya. So we have to be very mindful of what spirit is operating in us so that we can be vigilant of the falsehoods that's operating in others or else we'll be taken by their words, or they'll be taken by ours if we're walking in these spirits. All right? And we can't become a robber, 
a den of robbers to Alahayim. Because Alahayim gave us the spirit without any lying in it. And we're becoming a robber by allowing it to dwell in us. I'll give you that scripture later at the end. Um, let's go into Micah chapter 2, verse 11, please. Micah 2 and 11. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. Now we see this is facetious, right? It's facetious of a light subject. But we can apply it to subjects like the law is done away with. For those that desire to walk in their own desires, all right, or for a woman to teach, knowing that the law speaks against it, or the prosperity movement for those that love money. So we can we can kind of put it in any aspect, but at the end it's true. If that spirit dwells in us, then it's true. If a man walking in the spirit of falsehood do lie, saying, any of those things, he shall even be the prophet of this people because they're looking for someone to justify or vindicate what it is that they desire. And that's where it gets very, very dangerous and how it leads us to actually worshiping idols or serving idols or partaking with idols to then lead us away from Alahim. So let's see how the spirit that have placed in us operate if we submit ourselves to them. Um, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, and we're going to read 27 to 31, please. All right. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 27. For the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. For either they are mad when they be merry, or prophesy lies, or live unjustly, or else lightly forswear themselves. For insomuch as their trust is in idols, which have no life, though they swear falsely, yet they look not to be hurt. So we can see, as we spoke of earlier, how a false prophet can utter lies. It's because they can swear falsely, yet they look not to be hurt. They look not to be judged for their deeds. So there's no fear of Elohim in them. So it gives place for the spirit of lying to operate. When the scriptures are speaking of being empty, we can't be empty of fear of Elohim either because it's that fear or that reverence for Elohim that allows us to stay within the confines of the commandments. So you actually see that a person operating in the spirit of lying actually shows that they have no fear or no reverence for Elohim. They can lightly forswear themselves. They're mad when they seem to be happy they're actually angry. They're not happy with anything. Though they can actually put on, they can actually dissemble and still be upset but seem happy. They can prophesy lies or live unjustly because there's no fear. So now we actually get to understand what it means to be empty. Continue, Brother Casa, please. How be it, for both causes shall they be justly punished. Both because they thought not well of Allahim, giving heed unto idols, and also unjustly sworn deceit, despising holiness. Now, remember, a faithful witness will not lie. So we have to think well about Elohim, seeing that we're warned against him when idols operate in us. And that's very important. 
They thought not well of Elohim. They didn't have any fear or reverence toward him. And that gave heed unto idols and unjustly swore in deceit, despising holiness. So they didn't want to humble themselves to the commandments. Let's continue in Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 31, please. Sure. For it is not the power of them by whom they swear, but it is the just vengeance of sinners that punisheth always the offense of the unholy. Right. So we have to be mindful that it's not Allah working in us when we submit ourselves to such spirits. That's why I said for it. It's not the power of them by whom they swear. Because it's another, it's an idol operating in us if we are operating in such spirits. Right? So we have to be very mindful of what we're allowing to enter into our vessel and what we're allowing to operate within us. Right? It's very important. Let's see an example when these idols enter into the heart of Ananias and cause him and his wife to lie to Elohim. Um, let's go to Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 4, please. Sure. Acts chapter 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and bought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, look at that. Remember when it says, if we inquire of a false prophet or if we were actually partaking, we're actually cleaving unto the idol, we're giving, taking part in the idolatry. Now, Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, she was privy to what he did. So she actually partook in the idolatry. So this is why we have to be very mindful not to cleave unto any lie or to take part of any lie, but to cleave unto the truth only. Go ahead, Brother Casa, please. That's the law. All right. Paul told Timothy, don't be a partaker in other sins. Verse 3. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto Allah I am. So we see that we have a precept, the same in Leviticus, that when we lie, we lie unto Allah I am and not men. Right? So we got to see when Ananias and Sapphira, when they lied and Satan filled them, they actually lied to Allah I am. All right. So let's gain understanding to combat these idols from entering into our hearts to lead us away from the spirits of Elohim. All right. Let's go into Sirach chapter 5, verse 8 through 15, please. Okay. Sirach chapter 5, verse 8. Set not thine heart upon goods unjustly gotten, for they shall not profit thee in the day of calamity. So this is encouragement, not the lie for gain. Because right, there's many reasons where a lie can enter into us, seeing that there's many places for us to be empty. But this is encouragement for us to not lie for gain as being the cause of it. All right, continue, Casa. Winnow not with every wind, and go not into every way. For so doth the sinner that hath a double tongue. All right, so we have to cleave unto faith, cleave unto the law, cleave unto the commandments, cleave unto Allah and the fruits of the Spirit, so that we may not window at every wind and go not in every way. We have to be faithful, holding on to Allah and not going into the ways of our own desires or being tempted of our own desires. We don't want to be deceived at every turn to fulfill lust. 
But what is more profitable for us? Continue, Casa. Be steadfast in thy understanding and let thy word be the same. Right. So not to be doubtful minded, standing in the faith, abiding in the commandments and ridden of our worldly lust, but being spiritual. Go ahead, Brother Casa. Be swift to hear and let thy life be sincere and with patience give answer. Right. So be swift to hear. This is going to help us. So don't be hasty to do evil. Right. Be swift to hear, to listen. Not quick to give a word or to give an answer. Slowing down, focusing on the commandments and truth. Being sincere. That'll get us away from dissembling. Right. Being sincere. Right. So, and with patience, give an answer. So, slowing down. Right. Continue, Casa. If thou hast understanding, answer thy neighbor. If not, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Now, this is where pride can cause us to lie. Let not pride cause the sin and give place to the spirit of lying, wanting to have an answer of wanting to feel that feeling of exalting yourself to know the answer, All right? So if you have understanding and you understand it truly, give an answer. But if you don't, don't try to force an answer. All right, go ahead. Verse 13, honor and shame is in talk and the tongue of man is his fault. So you can choose to speak truth or you can choose to speak a lie, All right? So honor and shame is in the talk and the tongue of man is his fall, All right? So we have to be very mindful of what we speak. We have to be very mindful of what we do, All right? Continue, Casa, please. Be not called a whisperer and lie not in wait with thy tongue. For foul shame is upon the thief, and an evil condemnation upon the double tongue. All right. All right. So to lie and wait with the tongue means to be ready to say something. You're ready to speak. You're hasty in your speech. And if that is a struggle, it's going to cause you to lie. You're going to find yourself lying because you're not being quick to hear. And that is very, very key to actually overcoming the spirit of, of lying is to be slow to speak and quick to listen. It's very important. Go ahead, Brother Casa, please. Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or small. Now, let's understand that. Let's understand, be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or small. Let's go to Sirach chapter 20, verse 24, please. Chapter 20, verse 24. A lie is a foul blot in a man, yet it is continually in the mouth of the untaught. Right. So we don't want to be ignorant of anything of a great or small matter, but... A lie is found continually in the mouth of the untaught. Now, what is this referring to? This is why we can't be ignorant in any great or small matter when it comes to idols and how they operate. Because pride will cause us to lie, wanting to be exalted to give an answer, though we may be ignorant to the matter. So you can actually see what it's actually referring to and what it's actually talking about to help us that we may not fall into that snare. Continue, Brother Casa. We're going to stay in Sirach 20. Verse 25. A thief is better than a man that is accustomed to lie, but they both shall have destruction to heritage. The disposition of a liar is dishonorable, and his shame is ever with him. 
And this is what we're working to avoid and overcome, that we may walk in the goodness and truth of Elohim. Let's see Elohim's expectations and desires for us and how he operates toward us if idols have place in our hearts. So we really get to see if Elohim likes it or if he doesn't. Right? Um, Isaiah chapter 63, verse 7 to 10, please. All right, Isaiah chapter 63, verse 7. I will mention the loving kindness of Ahiah and the praise of Ahiah according to all that Ahiah hath bestowed upon us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. For he said, Surely they are my people, children that will not lie, so he was their savior. So Elohim was our savior when we are bold in the truth. Right? For he said, surely they are my people. Children that would not lie. You see that confidence? When we were walking with Elohim, he had confidence that we were going to do what was right. And that we were going to stay in the truth and walk in truth and not cleave to a lie. And he was our savior because of it. Let's continue, Casa, please. In all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. So because we abode in the truth, he went through everything and suffered with us. He was a faithful friend. Now, what happened when we chose not to abide in the truth? But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. So, if we're operating in the spirit of lying and not abiding in the truth, Elohim becomes our enemy, and he fights against us. He's the one that resists us. So now we have a clear indication of the black and white spectrum. Seeing that if we abide in the truth, Allah is our savior and he will go through afflictions with us. But if we operate in the spirit of lying, we become his enemy and he resists us and he fights against us. All right. So let's keep in mind, if we're struggling with the spirit of lying, as long as it's an option to do it, we're never going to overcome it. You can't justify it. We have to stand against it in the truth, holding fast to the law that we may get the victory. Because we don't want to operate in the spirit of idols and become an enemy to Elohim. So our goal here is to overcome the idols of this world and become one with Elohim. Can we read the Shepherd of Hermes parable 8, chapter 3, verse 6, please, Kasa, so we can understand what is the goal here. Shepherd of Hermes parable 8, chapter 3, verse 6. Who then, sir, say I, are they that have been crowned and go into the tower? As many, saith he, as wrestled with the devil and overcame him in their wrestling, are crowned. These are they that suffered for the law. So suffering for the law is keeping them against all temptation and trials. That's how we suffer for the law. Right? It's not about someone afflicting you. It's about what you do. You keeping the commandments and abiding in the fruits of the spirit, no matter what's going on, is actually what suffering for the law is. And our goal is to overcome the devil, right? Overcome the devil by overcoming the spirits that he operates in and the spirits that he has dominion over. This is why we have this grace to get it right now. Not being under the law, meaning not being judged according to the judgments of the law that we transgressed during this time period 
until we get to the wilderness where we'll be under the rod, according to Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 33 to 44. As our forefathers and Ananias and his wife that trespassed against Elohim and died because the spirit of lying had place in them. At that time in the wilderness, grace will be finished and will be judged quickly for our transgressions against the law from Yahweh himself. The same one who sacrificed himself for us to have this grace period according to his mercy. Right. So now we can understand what Paul was speaking about in Romans chapter six, that we're not under the law, but under grace, convincing us to turn from sin while we have the chance, knowing that grace will cease in times to come. Can we read Romans chapter six, verse 12 through 16? Okay. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto Allah as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto Allah for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Right. So sin would have dominion over us if we died in it being judged for our transgressions or transgressions according to the law of judgment. Right. So if we did a sin and the judgment for that sin was death, we would die in our sin and then death would have dominion over us. But because of the sacrifice that Yahche made and allowing us to have that time of grace where we're not judged quickly for our sins, it allows us to be under that grace and for sin not to have dominion over us. Now, what is Paul going to say with that understanding? Verse 15, what then shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? Allah am forbid. No. So we don't go and just sin because we're not under the law of judgment anymore right now in this time, but under grace, we're supposed to be doing what? What does Paul say? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? Right. So we're supposed to be actually learning to be servants to Allah that we may learn to obey him so that we be obedient unto righteousness so that we can actually grow and learn of Allah and learn how to serve him. This is why we have this time of grace so that we can actually come back to Allah and that we can falter and make our mistakes and, and find our way so that we can actually get to the place where we can actually serve him in truth. Now, let's understand when and what's going to happen coming up when grace is ceased and that we're supposed to be learned and use this time wisely to actually grow in the faith and grow to come out of sin and idolatry. Um, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 33, please. Ezekiel 20 and 33, as I live, saith the Lord Ahaya, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people and there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord Ahaya. Right. So we see that this is the time to come. Right. So is it like as he did with our forefathers in the land of Egypt? So we see that that happened. But what he's referring to is actually something that's coming in the future that hasn't happened because no one has went back to the wilderness again. All right. So what's going to happen in the wilderness? And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. 
So he's going to cause us to pass under the rod, which is the same thing as under the law. All right. So he's going to cause us to pass under the rod. and He's going to bring us into the bond of the covenant. If you haven't seen the covenant lesson, the old and new covenant lesson, please go and watch that so you can actually understand the fullness of being brought back into the bond of the covenant, which actually brings everything together. But let's continue. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. Can you read that again, brother, please? And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. So he's actually, Alahayim, Yahweh himself, is actually going to be purging the rebels, those that don't want to conform to his commandments and his laws and the fruits of the Spirit, those that want to operate in idols, want to operate in the spirit of idols, they're going to be purged out. And them that transgress against him, because the only way you can transgress against him is by breaking his law and by breaking the commandments and by operating in the works of the flesh, which is going to cause you to break a commandment. Not obeying his voice. Right. So you actually get to see that grace has ceased. That's the end of grace. Now we're back under the law in this time period. All right, let's continue, Kasa. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Ahaya. And you're going to know that he is Ahaya, right? That it's him that's doing it. It's him that's working it. It's his spirit that's bringing us back unto the law and the commandments and the fruits of the spirit. It's his spirit that's bringing us back into the truth to walk and be clothed in it, to hate a lie. It's his spirit. And we're all going to know that at that time because we're all going to be back under the law, back under the rod, that grace is going to cease. All right? So definitely be mindful of that and don't take this time for granted that he's given unto us to actually learn of him and to actually walk in his ways and obey his voice. So what do we need to be working on during this time of grace? Let's get to the Shepherd of Hermes, um, parable 6, chapter 1, verse 4, please. Sure. Parable 6, chapter 1, verse 4. Ye then that repent, cast away the evil doings of this world, which crush you. And by putting on every excellence of righteousness, you shall be able to observe these commandments and to add no more to your sins. If then ye add no further sin at all, ye will depart from your former sins. Walk then in these my commandments, and ye shall live unto Allah Hayyam. These things have all been told you from me. So as was aforementioned, it can't be an option nor justified to continue in them. So by not adding more sin, you actually get to deal with the sin that you have. And by being able to deal with the sin that you have, you actually get to work through it. But if I'm constantly adding, I'm not moving forward. I'm not overcoming. Because now I'm dealing with one, and now I'm adding another that I have to deal with. So I'm just in a spinning cycle. I'm just going in circles. But if I don't add no more to my sins, and I'm actually dealing with the things that I have going on, then I'm actually moving forward. I'm actually ridding of things one by one until I get to the place where I'm good. I've overcame those things. So we have to be very mindful not to be adding no more to our sins and actually dealing with what we have going on so that we can actually move forward. Can we um read uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, please? Sure. Oh. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. 
So you definitely have to catch the lie and not justify or be blinded to not see the law or stay ignorant to the law. Because if you do that, you're going to just continue to make more lies and add more sin and mix truth with lies, making it harder to come out of them and allow the spirit to have a habitation given place to listen to more lies. So you're going to add more sin, right? So you have to actually cleave unto truth so that no more lies can enter in and no more sin can enter in. This is why it's so important to cleave unto truth. That's why Yache is the truth, right? Because when he enters in and truth enters in, and that spirit, as we talked about with the false prophet and the true prophet, when Yahweh's spirit enters in, the lies cease because that spirit of lying is inferior and it gets broken. So we have to start working on cleaving to truth in all things so that we don't add no more sins unto ourselves. Now, you have to be seeking truth in everything to be clothed in it. So this is our portion to actually be seeking that truth, right? So you have to seek that truth in everything, including yourself, to get to him, as Psalm 15 states, that those that speak the truth in their hearts are entering to his holy hill, right? So we have to be seeking it, and we have to examine ourselves by the truth that we may be able to then rid of those lies so that we won't actually add any more sin unto ourselves. Um, can we jump over to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, please? Sure. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So speaking the truth in love and not speaking it in hatred to hurt or tear someone down through pride will grow us in Christ's spirit. So that verse is very important. Speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. You see how important that is? Speaking the truth, not just speaking the truth, because we can speak the truth in, in frustration. We can speak the truth in anger. We can speak the truth in pride. But speaking the truth in love is so important because it actually allows us to grow into Christ. I hope y'all are hearing me here. Speaking the truth in love helps us grow into Christ. Practice this. Remember this in all your workings, in all your doings, so that you can actually grow stronger in speaking the truth in love. Now, what happens if we do this? Let's continue, Picasso. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So then we will be clothed in truth. Allah, I am willing. Let's put forth our hand to the plow and let's do the work. All right. We're going to jump over to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 10, please. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of Allah. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in Allah. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. 
mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of Allah I am cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth, Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. All right, so let's be encouraged. We're reading all these scriptures to encourage us on what we need to do, all right, so that we may come out of any spirit of idolatry. All right. There's no better words than the teachings of Yahshua himself. Let's see what Yahshua said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 2 through 12, please. Matthew chapter 5, verse 2. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see Allah Hayyam. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of Allah Hayyam. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all men of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So let us walk and be mindful of these things always and keep them in remembrance so that we may be on the right side walking uprightly and being lied on not doing the lying to others truly suffering for righteousness sake right so if a man lies on us for doing what's right praise Allah Hayyam. let Allah Hayyam do his work don't seek to justify ourselves just continue to focus on Allah Hayyam. but let us not be the one that's lying on others right that's not the spirit that we want to dwell with us we want to enter into Christ's kingdom, so we have to overcome and get the victory over these idols. We can't allow them to prohibit us of this great calling in Yahshua. Can we read Revelation 21, verse 10, and then we're going to read um, verse 27, please. Sure. Revelation 21 and 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from Allah Hayim. All right, so this is Christ's kingdom. This is the kingdom to come. Go ahead, Brother Kasa. Verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Right, so we have to remember... Even when Satan came to Adam, he said because Adam had caused him to fall from so great a glory, that envy came upon the devil to cause Adam to fall. And this is what he wanted Adam to fall from. And this is the same thing that the devil wants us to fall from, and that we do not make it into the kingdom. So he's putting all these abominations. He's allowing the spirit of lying to enter in and to deceive us and to cause us to operate in it so that we will fall short of the glory to enter in Yahshua's kingdom, right? So just to reiterate, we can't allow these idols to cause us not to make it in Christ's kingdom and the eternal kingdom of Elohim to come after. 
let us not allow bitterness to enter into any of our hearts and allow ourselves to harbor a lie. The law tells us in Matthew 5 and 44 to love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And we have to keep that for many of our people are angry and bitter toward those that have persecuted us with lying and evil words and evil works. Can we read Revelations chapter 3, verse 7 through 9, please? Sure. Revelations 3 and 7. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou hast a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name well let's first understand that what is about to be said came from Elohim. Right? i know it don't make sense now but what's about to be said it comes from Elohim. so it when Elohim says that when we're operating in the spirit of lion He's our enemy, and he's working against us, and he's warring against us. So let's understand what actually transpired to us. Um, let's continue, Brother Casa. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. So he said, he will make them, which are the synagogue of Satan. We know that it's Elohim that's doing it, right? And it was Elohim that put us into slavery, all the children of Israel, because of our disobedience and because of our hearkening to idols, which made Elohim war against us, right? So let us not be bitter toward any man or woman and anything that has befallen us, but allow us to be free, focusing on ourselves, focusing on the spirit and walking in truth and love, truth with love, so that we can actually overcome the devil that wants to try to get us in any snare that he can. We can't be bitter against the past, and we have to look forward to the future to grow and to walk in the spirit of Elohim, right? Now, what does the testament of God tell us to do in such cases so that we can actually understand and not be given over to the spirit of bitterness or envy or jealousy? Testament of God, chapter 7, verse 1. If a man prospereth more than you, do not be vexed. But pray also for him that he may have perfect prosperity. For so it is expedient for you. And if he be further exalted, be not envious of him. Remember that all flesh shall die. And offer praise to Allah who giveth things good and profitable to all men. Seek out the judgments of the Lord, and thy mind will rest and be at peace. And though a man become rich by evil means, even as Esau, the brother of my father, be not jealous, but wait for the end of the Lord. For if he taketh away from a man wealth gotten by evil means, he forgiveth him if he repent. Right. So if we're walking in that perfect love of Christ Yache, this is what we should be praying for and hoping for, not giving over to anger and bitterness of heart. We should be praying for them to repent. All right. Continue, Brother Casa. But the unrepentant is reserved for eternal punishment. For the poor man, if free from envy, he pleaseth the Lord in all things, is blessed beyond all men, because he hath not the travail of vain men. Put away, therefore, jealousy from your souls, and love one another with uprightness of heart. 
So we don't want to give place for any idol to have place in us, especially in these end times during the hour of temptation that's going to befall the whole world. We have to truly rid of all lusts or desires that are against Allah, lest we be cast away from the faith. All right, let's read Revelations 3 and 10 through 13 so that we can understand what time we're in today. Revelations 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So we're all being tried right now. That's why lust and fornication and every evil, anger, everything is coming upon everyone in the whole earth because we're all being tried in the hour of temptation. So we have to stand in more faith and overcoming idols, at least we be taken in their snares. Let's continue, Brother Costa, please. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy ground. The things we're learning now is for our salvation. So let's hold fast to it that we may endure unto the end and get the victory over the devil. All right? So hold that fast which thou hast. This is why we're learning. This is why Allah has given the understandings so that we can actually hold fast to them and keep them and do them so that we will overcome the hour of temptation. Go ahead, Brother Kassim. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my Allah, I am, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my Allah, I am, and the name of the city of my Allah, I am, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my Allah, I am, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So let's take good heed to what Allah is speaking to us so that we may partake in that. We may partake in New Jerusalem. All right. So now we're getting to the goals. We're getting to the goals to see what we're looking towards, what, we, what we're trying to get to, and what we have to do to get there. Right. So let's gain understanding to help us overcome these idols. Let's jump to Hermes Mandate 3, chapter 1, verse 1, please. Hermes Mandate 3, chapter 1, verse 1. Again saith he to me, Love truth, and let nothing but truth proceed out of thy mouth, that the spirit which Allah am made to dwell in this flesh may be found true in the sight of all men. And thus shall the Lord who dwelleth in thee be glorified. For the Lord is true in every word, and with him there is no falsehood. And we have to be the same. All right? So love truth and let nothing but truth proceed out of our mouths. And that's how we cleave unto it. Truth with love. All right? So that we may be found faithful. Go ahead, Kassim. They therefore that speak lies set the Lord at naught and become robbers of the Lord. For they do not deliver up to him the deposit which they received. For they received of him a spirit free from lies. This, if they shall return a lying spirit, they have defiled the commandment of the Lord and have become robbers. When then I heard these things, I wept bitterly. But seeing me weep, he saith, Why weepest thou? Because, sir, say I, I know not if I can be saved. Why so? saith he. Because, sir, I say, Never in my life spake I a true word, but I always lied deceitfully with all men, and dressed up my falsehood as truth before all men. And no man ever contradicted me, but confidence was placed in my word. How then, sir, say I, can I live, seeing that I have done these things? So let's be encouraged. There's nothing new under the sun. And what we're going through, others likewise have been through. Nothing is impossible with Allah. And we can come out of any tribulation through their spirit helping us, through the spirit of Allah helping us, just as Hermes. 
right? So don't be discouraged and think that you can't come out of it. You can, right? And Allah Hayyam has given us witness and telling us what to do and even giving us an example of someone that came out of it to show that it's possible for us too. Go ahead, Brother Kasifo. Your supposition, saith he, is right and true. For it behooved thee as a servant of Allah Hayyam to walk in truth, and no complicity with evil should abide with the spirit of truth, nor bring grief to the spirit which is holy and true. Never, sir, say I, heard I clearly words such as these. Now then, saith he, thou hearest, guard them that the former falsehoods also which thou spakest in thy business affairs may themselves become credible, now that these are found true. For they too can become trustworthy. If thou keep these things, and from henceforward speak nothing but truth, thou shalt be able to secure life for thyself. And whoever shall hear this command, and abstain from falsehood, that most pernicious habit, shall live unto Allah Hayyam. So you see the angel Fenuel actually gave Hermes the same commandment not to add any more sin, but to actually deal with what you have going on so that you can actually come out of it. And that's very important for us not to add any more sin, right? To not continue in it, but to stop it and then deal with it and deal with the different spirits that we may be struggling with so that we can actually come out of it and move forward and not just be in a constant circle and a constant hamster wheel, so to speak. Now, remember these things as well. We're going to reiterate these things so that we can remember them. Uh, Sirach 5 and 10 through 15, please. Sirach 5 and 10. Be steadfast in thy understanding, and let thy word be the same. Be swift to hear, and let thy life be sincere, and with patience give answer. If thou hast understanding, answer thy neighbor. If not, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Honor and shame is in talk, and the tongue of man is his fall. Be not called a whisperer, and lie not in wait with thy tongue, for a foul shame is upon the thief, and an evil condemnation upon the double tongue. Be not ignorant of anything, in a great matter or a small. Especially when it pertains to your soul and salvation. We hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any questions or comments, please comment in the comment section, or send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. We love you all. Make sure you check the website and make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification when we drop any new content or any new videos or lessons. Uh, we thank you and we love you all. Brother Kostafo, you got anything before we get out of here? Mm -hmm. Praise Allah for the edification, man. All right. Shout out to tell them, everyone. We love you. Peace. HRC, HRC, HRC. HRC, HRC, HRC. Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church.